Muslim is an action. It's what you do. It's not an identity. The first thing is, as a Muslim, I cannot shake the hand of a woman. What values were these men expressing? Were they expressing Islamic values? No. Now, were they expressing British values? Stop raping girls. Stop grooming girls. We live in 21st century blighty, 21st century Great Britain. How can we have 1,400 girls in Rotherham, 1,000 girls in Telford, neglected, thrown away, no one cared about them? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all my brothers and sisters in Islam and once more peace be upon all my brothers and sisters in humanity. Okay, um, today's topic is bam 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 grooming gangs. Okay, I've seen this going around. Britain's first are the ones responsible for this to be honest with you. Jada Franson's loved this line, Muslim grooming gangs, Muslim grooming gangs. And it's happening in Rotherham, it's happening in Telford, it's happening everywhere, Aylesbury, all these places. So um, it's time to look into this. Um, I've promised this for a while, so um, here we go, inshallah. Okay, the first thing we have to know is what is a grooming gang? What is a grooming gang? What does it mean? Are there people who go around grooming people? How, what do we mean grooming gang? Basically what a grooming gang is this. It's a group of men, starts off maybe with one individual, who will seek out a vulnerable girl and when he's found his victim he will then behave in a manner showing love to that girl in the sense of giving her gifts then he may offer alcohol cigarettes and such once he gains that girl's trust that's when he'll move in and invite friends and such as and before we know it we have a girl who is a victim of a gang who are abusing and raping her and plying her with alcohol and drugs this is what a grooming gang, this is how, the grooming is the sense of, it starts off as nice, lovey-dovey, friendly, showing a bit of caring, caring for her, and then by the, and they slowly, slowly, slowly slip into the grip of these people, thinking, I mean, you could even call it Stockholm Syndrome, where they, they truly believe these people love them, because they're giving them gifts of alcohol, and giving them free drugs and such, but then by the time they get down to the, what happens at the end, it's too late, they're gone. So this is a grooming gang, this is what they do. And it doesn't just happen um, with, with Muslims. It happens through, every, through schools, through, it happens through um, care, care homes, it happens in all sports, we found it in football, we found it in um, athletic, we found it, we know it happens. Yeah, we know, we, you know, actresses, young actresses who um, want to be stars, they're preyed upon by men who can offer such things that they think they have um, some kind of advantage or some kind of um, love from this people. Okay, so this is a grooming, but we're going to stick specifically to these Muslim grooming gangs because that's the one that Jada Franson bangs on about. She doesn't worry about if white men are raping girls. She only cares about brown men that rape girls. So we'll focus on that. Okay, first of all, Muslim grooming gang. Okay, first of all, this doesn't make any sense. Muslim is an action. It's what you do. It's not an identity. Okay, if you do Islam, you're a Muslim. I get that. Okay, now when you call someone a Muslim grooming gang, you're, you're implying that the people who do this act are acting in the name of Islam or acting according to the teachings of Islam. And this couldn't be farther from the truth. Especially Jada Franson knows, as she found out with Ali Dawa, a Muslim man cannot shake the hand of a Muslim wo of a woman who isn't related to him, whether it's a mother, his daughter, his wife, or whatever sister, whatever. He cannot touch her, cannot shake her hand, and we get mocked for this. Ali was mocked for this. Laura Southern did it to him as well. Oh, shake your hand, Ali, knowing he wouldn't do it, knowing Islam prohibits this. And you mock us for it. You say we're backwards for this because we won't touch the hand of a woman. Well, to be honest with you, we can't be victims of what men are being accused of now. Yeah, me too. This idea that men have been touching women inappropriately. We can't even shake their hands. OK, so the first thing is, as a Muslim, I cannot shake the hand of a woman. So I certainly, certainly cannot rape her. First thing. Second thing, as a Muslim man, I cannot buy, transport, sell, give alcohol. So the second thing is, I cannot ply a girl with alcohol. 
<laughs> because I can't do alcohol. Okay. So, and, and as, you know, as Jordan said on his video, that now he's a Muslim, he, he's, he, he doesn't, has less opportunity to be a groomer if he wanted to be. Not, because you can't touch alcohol, you can't be alone with a girl. So th this is a nonsense. Now, I'm happy to say they were Pakistani grooming gangs, in particular Rotherham, because their identity was Pakistani because well, that was their heritage. Not their way of life, their heritage. So if you want to define it that way, that is not too much. I'm happy with that. But Muslim, absolute garbage. Now here's the irony. What values were these men expressing? Were they expressing Islamic values? No. Now, were they expressing British values? Well, alcohol is a British value, and sex outside of marriage is a British value. So, to be honest with you, you could say they were westernised or Britishized Pakistanis, yeah? Because they're using it, they're adopting a culture that doesn't belong to Islam, they're adopting the culture of where they live. And you people are always saying we should adopt the culture of where we live. So you're actually encouraging men, to, Muslim men, to go and drink alcohol and, be, and have girls outside of marriage and all. You, you're happy with this, but Islam prohibits it. So, first thing, let's get this out of the way, this is not a Muslim gang. Because if Islam taught this, you'd have a point, but it doesn't, so you don't. Okay. The way I see this, um, there's three steps that I truly believe that if we employ these three steps, we have a chance of stopping this nastiness. There's three parts to this that I think we need to address. The first part is, of course, the rapists. Men, this is for you guys. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your race is. Stop raping girls. Stop grooming girls. Stop giving gifts to girls and encouraging them to come and be alone with you and then doing what you want with them. Whether you, I don't care what religion you are. I don't care if you're a white man doing it. I don't care if you're a Hindu doing it or a Muslim doing it. Stop it. This is my personal plea. Stop it. If you're a Muslim, this is completely against Islam and you're harming the reputation of Muslims and Islam by your disgusting actions. Second thing, if you know of anybody, of anybody who is doing this, if you know your local takeaway or your local taxi driver who takes advantage of vulnerable girls and you think it might be a joke, expose them. Because if we don't, we need to expose them we need to report them to the police and they need to be punished by the full extent of the law. Now, I know you guys would love to see them victims of Sharia law. I've heard so many times, castrate them, string them up, whatever, whatever, but we can't. Expose them, report them to the law. Police, if, there's a, if there is any cover up for fear of racism, please forget that nonsense. Yeah, expose them because you know what they're doing to our community, how they're making Islam luck, and you look at destroying the lives of these girls. So it needs to end. So my first step is what? Scum, rapist, stop it. Okay, I can't, I can't say any more than that. Scum are gonna be scum, rapists are gonna be rapists. That's as much as I can do. But in Islam, we have this thing. Um, if I see injustice or if I see uh, haram, I can try and stop it with my hand. If I can't stop it with my hand, if I don't have the power to stop it with my hand, then the second level is what? With my tongue. And if I can't stop it with my tongue, then I hate it in my heart. So right now I'm trying to stop it with my tongue. That's as much as I can do. And of course I hate it in my heart. Okay. So the first step to stopping this grooming gang nonsense? Rapists, please leave girls alone. Now if the girls, if the rapists don't leave the girls alone, that they ignore this, or they think that they have a right to do this, then the second step is what? We need to remove the availability of vulnerable girls because they're preying on vulnerable girls. So now society has to step up to the plate now because we don't live in a third world country and we don't live in a disaster zone where there's girls that have been orphaned and such. We live in 21st century Blighty, 21st century Great Britain. How can we have 1,400 girls in Rotherham, 1,000 girls in Telford, neglected, thrown away, no one cared about them? 
It's, I don't get it. We need an inquiry into this. What is going on in our societies that neglects girls on this scale, on this industrial scale? So the second step is society needs to step up the plate and it needs to work out how these girls became vulnerable and do something about that. Because if you take away the prey, the predator has no chance. But if you leave these girls vulnerable, the scum are always going to be scum. Now, I've heard it said that these scumbags only prey on white English girls because they're, they're seen as trash because they're not Muslim. Utter garbage. I'll explain it again to you. Vulnerability here is the key. When a girl is vulnerable, this is what the predator will prey on. Now, the Muslim girl, in the majority of cases, will be in a family that cares for them that doesn't neglect them, that doesn't allow them free sex with whichever lad they choose to be their boyfriend that day. It doesn't allow this. You see, a predator with a white English girl can pass himself off as, a, off as, a, off as her boyfriend. So when someone sees him, who's that? She says, my boyfriend, because she thinks he's a boyfriend. But a Muslim girl cannot do that because we don't have that value. So if you think that it's because they're white they're being preyed upon, no. The key is what? It's because they're vulnerable. And like I said, society needs to uh, take responsibility for that. And the third step, now this is the controversial part because I'm not victim blaming here, but girls need to wise up. No, there are predators out there hunting you. They are gonna prey on your vulnerability. So let's say the scumbags don't stop raping. Let's say society continues to neglect you. Now it's on you. Now you need to wise up. You need to see when, you, when someone approaches you in this manner, you know what's going on. And you run the other way. Yeah? Don't, you know, when, as a child you were told, don't accept sweets from strangers. Just apply that to drugs and alcohol as well. And then you've got a chance. Because once you start taking alcohol and sweets and of strange men, know they're going to expect something in return. Don't be naive. Okay? Not blaming you girls, you're victims of a society and the scumbags, but you have a responsibility as well. Because if the society continues to neglect you, you need to wise up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so to summarize, um, if the scum continue to be scum, we cannot do anything about that, except exposing them and punish them according to the law. But we can make sure that the girls don't become in a vulnerable state so that it can be preyed upon and we can teach the girls to wise up. So that's my three-pronged attack. Because you see, this is the way I see it. These girls are the victims. Don't let anyone say I'm blaming the victims. They are the victims and there's no blame upon them. They are victims of three things. They are the victims of what? A society that neglected them. They are victims of what? A, a scum who prey on their vulnerabilities. They are the victims of what? their own naivety. They are the victims here. They are the ones needing love and protection here. So if we can address that problems, then we'll make it them less likely to be victims of these scum. Now here's the irony, just to end it. This is the, this is the amazing irony. According to the teachings of Islam, Islam would eradicate this problem overnight. If the people adhere to the teachings of Islam, there will be no such thing as grooming gangs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.